Handbrake's picture tab is used for cropping black borders from your source video and changing the resolution. Removing borders avoids wasting space in your encoded video. Solid colored areas, which don't change over the course of the video, require fewer bits to encode, but when you add up all those bits, for every frame, it can make a noticeable difference in either the size or quality of Handbrake's output. If you will only be playing your video on a display with lower resolution than your source, reducing the resolution of video before encoding is also a good idea. Otherwise the encoder will be wasting space encoding information you won't see. If you plan to watch your video on a variety of devices, you'll generally want to consider only the one with the highest resolution. For example, if you want a single file to watch on both high definition and standard definition TVs, you should be considering the high definition TV only. Before you do any cropping or resizing, you should first determine whether your source video is anamorphic. When a picture is anamorphic, it means it will be horizontally stretched or compressed during playback. Sometimes you can tell whether your video is anamorphic just by knowing where it came from. DVDs, for example, are always anamorphic. If you're not sure whether your source is anamorphic, you can figure it out by looking at the information Handbrake gives you on the Picture tab. The source resolution and aspect ratio are listed near the top. This is the horizontal resolution and the vertical resolution. If you divide the horizontal resolution by the vertical and come up with a number that's the same as the aspect ratio, you have a square pixel source. Otherwise, it's anamorphic. For example, my source has a horizontal resolution of 720 pixels. If I divide that by the vertical resolution of 480 pixels, I get 1.5. Since the aspect ratio listed in Handbrake is 1.78, I know I have an anamorphic source. The primary importance of determining whether your source video is anamorphic is in calculating its aspect ratio after cropping. Aspect ratio determines the shape of the picture when the video is played. A higher aspect ratio means a wider picture. For example, if the aspect ratio is 1.85, which is shorthand for 1.85 to 1, it is 1.85 times as wide as it is tall. By default, Handbrake automatically crops any black borders from the sides the left side, the top, the right side, and the bottom. If no borders are being cropped, the aspect ratio listed for the source is all you need to know. It will be identical to the aspect ratio of your output. If your video uses square pixels rather than anamorphic, you can subtract the borders from the original dimensions and divide the width by the height to find the aspect ratio. For example, if my source had square pixels, I would simply subtract 2 from the horizontal resolution and then divide 718 by 480. Of course, I have anamorphic pixels in this case, so my calculations will be different. In fact, if your source is anamorphic, the calculations will be more complicated. Fortunately, there are shortcuts you can use. In some cases, you can simply look at a DVD or Blu-ray case to find the aspect ratio after cropping. Typical values are 1.33, which is full screen or full frame video, 1.66, 1.78, 1.85, or 2.35. All are ratios to 1. If you can't figure it out that way, there's another option. A program called Aspect can calculate it for you. Since Aspect is not included with Handbrake, you'll need to download and install it separately. You can download Aspect from AfterDawn.com's software section. Type Aspect in the search box and click the search button. Then select Aspect from the search results list. Click the download button to begin your download.
Then save the file to the location of your choice. Go to the folder where you downloaded Aspect to and unzip it. Double click the unzipped file to start the installer. The setup wizard will walk you through all the steps required for installation. If you are running a version of Windows newer than Windows XP, such as Windows Vista or Windows 7, it's a good idea to install your software to a folder other than the default locations of Program Files or Program Files x86 on the C drive. Click the Browse button to select a new location. I've created multiple program folders on my system. In this case, I'll be installing to Multimedia Tools x86. Click OK to select the location, and then click Next to continue. By default, Aspect creates a folder on your start menu called Utils, which it will then put Aspect into. You can remove this by simply deleting Utils and the slash. Click Next again to continue. You can create a desktop icon at this point, and then click Next again. Finally, click Install. When installation is complete, click the Finish button. To use Aspect with Handbrake, obviously you must first open your source in Handbrake. Then start up Aspect. Click on the blue triangle next to the Aspect Ratio and select Advanced. Finally, copy the resolution and cropping numbers directly from Handbrake. In my case, we have 720 by 480 and a source aspect ratio of 16 by 9. The only border is going to be 2 pixels on the right. That shows me that I have a final aspect ratio of 1.77 to 1. In this example, there isn't a lot of difference between the cropped aspect ratio and the original. So let's look at one more example to see where it comes in handy. This time I've loaded another DVD source, but in a much wider format. After applying the cropping from Handbrake, 58 pixels at the top and 64 at the bottom, once again, directly from the automatic cropping that Handbrake does, you'll see that I have an aspect ratio for the cropped movie of 2.38 to 1. This is where it gets interesting. If you were to examine the DVD case for this movie, it would actually list 2.35 to 1. So which one is correct? In reality, the actual aspect ratio of a 2.35 to 1 movie made from the early 1970s on could actually end up anywhere between 2.35 to 1 and 2.40 to 1. Thanks to the many steps involved in going from film to DVD, you really have no way of knowing what the exact aspect ratio should be. That means that either you need to use your best judgment, use your own preference, or simply assume that an aspect ratio anywhere between 2.35 to 1 and 2.4 to 1 should be acceptable. In most cases, you shouldn't ever notice the difference anyway. Now we can return to Handbrake and contemplate resizing. Go ahead and close Aspect. We may be back to it in a minute. Once you know whether your source uses anamorphic or square pixels and what its aspect ratio is, you can decide whether and how you want to change the resolution. To begin with, I start with six basic rules. Number one, resolution equals detail. Reducing the resolution also lowers the amount of detail. Number two, you can't add detail to your source. Increasing the resolution will generally produce lower quality video and, depending on your video encoder settings, may also result in a larger final file size. Number three, encoding at a higher resolution than your display 
retains details you'll never see. Only keep details you can see. Number four. Because of the way color will be stored in your video, the width and height must both be evenly divisible by two, also referred to as modulus two or simply mod two. Number five. Because of how video encoders work, mod 16 width and height are preferred although mod 8 or in some cases even mod 4 resolutions may be used. Mod 8 or mod 4 dimensions must be padded internally by the encoder resulting in either reduced quality or increased file size although the differences will generally be minimal. Number 6. Because nearly all video has more pixels horizontally than vertically a mod 8 or mod 4 horizontal resolution will impact file size or quality less than a mod 8 or mod 4 vertical resolution. The lower the resolution, the less important this distinction is. In order to make use of these rules, we need to compare our video to the display it will be played on. That means we'll also need to know the resolution and aspect ratio of the display. To find the aspect ratio of any digital display, including digital TVs, computer monitors, portable media players, and smartphones, First, find the resolution and then divide width by the height. For example, a mobile device with a 480 by 320 display has an aspect ratio of 480 divided by 320 or 1.5 to 1. If you will be watching video on more than one type of display, make sure to consider the one with the highest resolution. Next, compare the aspect ratio of your source, once again after cropping borders, to the aspect ratio of your display. If your source aspect ratio is equal to or wider than your display, also compare the horizontal resolution of each. Finally, you need to consider the display size of your video. Since anamorphic pictures are not displayed with the same resolution that they're encoded at, the display size will be different for those. In other words, 851 pixels is what 720 pixels will be stretched to for this anamorphic video. If the horizontal resolution of your display is greater than or, or equal to both the horizontal resolution of the video and the display horizontal resolution of the video, don't resize at all. Encode anamorphically or not to match the source. If the horizontal resolution of your display is less than the actual resolution of your source video, resize horizontally to match your display and divide that number by the source's aspect ratio to get the height. If the horizontal resolution of your display is more than the actual horizontal resolution of your source video, but less than the display horizontal resolution, meaning an anamorphic source of course, keep the original horizontal resolution and divide your display's horizontal resolution by the source's aspect ratio once again after cropping borders and find the height that way then encode anamorphically. If the aspect ratio of your source video is narrower than your display meaning a lower number resizing is much simpler. Either resize vertically to match the vertical resolution of your display or keep the original vertical resolution of the source whichever is a lower number. Then multiply your display's vertical resolution by the source's aspect ratio and use either that number or the original horizontal resolution whichever is less.